This theorem states that if a sequence is an infinitive, meaning that it tends to infinity, or in other cases minus infinity, then the reciprocal of it, so 1 over that same sequence, is going to tend to 0 plus. So it'll converge to 0 from above. So it's a pretty straightforward proof because we're just going to use the definitions for divergent plus infinity and convergent to 0 from above and show how if one is satisfied, the other will automatically be satisfied as well. So just to go over them really quick, uh, the first part says that the sequence is divergent to plus infinity. If something is divergent to plus infinity, that means that no matter what value k you take, so k would be a value here, which would represent the beginning of a neighborhood of plus infinity, after some point, which we can call n bar, so this here would be n bar, the sequence will be in the neighborhood, which means that it'll be greater than k. So formally, we can say that for every k bigger than 0, after some point, which we call n bar, the sequence will belong to the neighborhood, which means it'll be greater than k. So this will be the definition of divergent to plus infinity. Also here I used um, an, but I meant to use xn. It's just another notation for a sequence. Then for the other part, we're going to say that the 1 over the sequence converges to 0 from above. So for that one, we would have something that tends to 0 like this from the positive side. And if we take a neighborhood, because we specifically want to show that it converges to 0 from above, we're going to go, usually you would go up and down for a neighborhood, but here we're only going to go up. So if the limit is 0, then this here is 0 plus epsilon, so just epsilon. And again, from after starting from a specific point n bar, the sequence will belong to the neighborhood. So formally, we can say that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a particular point. And after this particular point, the sequence will belong to the neighborhood, which means that it'll be between 0 included and epsilon. This will be the definition of convergent from above. So now the proof is just going to be using these two definitions, and again, we're just going to show how if one is satisfied, the other is satisfied. And just to clarify here, I meant to write 1 over xn, just because that's what we're trying to prove here. So the only real thing that we have to show is uh, show that there's a relationship between k and epsilon. Um, but besides that, it's really just a matter of stating the, the definitions. So if we prove it in the first way, so in this direction, we start off saying that the sequence tends to plus infinity, which again formally means that all of this is satisfied here. So you start off just writing that out. So we're trying to find a way to take the reciprocal of the sequence, so 1 over xn and also find a relationship between k and epsilon. So what you want to do here is take k equal to 1 over epsilon so that we can say that xn is bigger than 1 over epsilon. Now since k was uh, bigger than 0, epsilon also is bigger than 0, so everything is positive here. And so we can easily move everything around and we write it as epsilon is bigger than xn, sorry, 1 over xn. Which is the same thing as saying that 1 over xn is smaller than epsilon. 
Now remember that we're trying to prove here that if um, the sequence converges to plus infinity, sorry, diverges to plus infinity, then 1 over xn tends to 0 plus. So we're trying to prove that this here is satisfied. We already proved the first part, or the second part actually, of the inequality. Now we just have to show that it's also bigger or equal to 0. But since we said before that uh, k was positive and xn was bigger than that, then we can be sure that it's also bigger than 0. And so if it's bigger than 0, it's also bigger or equal to 0. So this you can just explain through this since k was positive anyway. And so here we can confirm that 1 over the sequence tends to 0 from above. So again, it's really just a matter of using the definition of divergent, replacing k with 1 over epsilon, and then moving everything around to, um, to end up with 1 over the, the sequence. Now we're going to prove it in the opposite way. So we're going to start off knowing that 1 over xn tends to 0 plus. And we're going to show that that implies that xn must diverge to plus infinity. So if we know that 1 over xn converges to 0 plus, we can use the definition of convergent from above from before. So for every epsilon, again, there exists a particular point. after which the sequence is in a neighborhood. So 1 over xn is in between 0 included and epsilon. So this is what we mentioned above. So this is just the neighborhood from above. And uh, just like before, we can say that um, epsilon is going to equal 1 over k. We're assuming that um, k is greater than 0. And uh, if we plug everything in, so if we replace epsilon with 1 over k, it's the same kind of thing we did before. Since we know that everything is positive, we can multiply the xn over and also the k over, and we end up with uh, k is smaller than xn, which is the same thing as saying that xn is bigger than k. And this is just the definition of divergent. So this tells us that xn tends to plus infinity. Because for every k, there will always be values of xn which are bigger than it. And so we proved it in the opposite way as well. So in the end, it's just a matter of knowing these two definitions and essentially uh, replacing k with 1 over epsilon or epsilon with 1 over k, just so that we end up with the reciprocal of the sequence.